Well, here we are in my side yard, taking a little break for my favorite snack, Cocoa Puffs. You guys know how that is. Mom would only let me have it for dessert. So I let myself have one handful a day or two, maybe three. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Anyway, what I wanted to show you was, Monica, will you pan over here? Do you see this little birdhouse I have up here? And you notice how there's a little tube on it? That is so a squirrel cannot get in, or a rat, or a mouse, to eat the baby birds and the eggs, which they will do. It's kind of sad to say, but I guess they have to eat too. And that's a protein, that's a meat for them. I put one over here also, for birds who like to nest lower. And I'm not opening it all right now, because if I did, what if there were baby birds in there and I frightened them? So I'm just like waiting and hoping that somebody's in there. But we'll see what happens. And then I've told you before that when I'm in the bathroom, I can sit there. And there's one up here too, above the bathroom window. This is the master bathroom window. And there, there's guy, there are guys in there. There are chickadees in there for sure. We might hear the chickadees show up and go, chickadee, chickadee, while we're here and be mad that we're by their, their nesting box. So I put them all over. Let me show these to you when they're brand new. These are for cavity nesting birds. You know when you get cavities in your tooth, it's a hole in your tooth? Well, there's a hole in this. And these are for cavity nesting birds. They smell really good. It's made of incense cedar. Incense is something you would burn that smells good. A stick that burns that makes the house smell good. And it keeps mites off the birds that are like fleas on a dog. And here's a little part inside. See how cute that is? These make really nice birthday presents too. These are only $10 at Walmart. And you lock it up like this. And chickadees like this, tit mice like this, Buicks wrens like it. There's so many birds who will go inside and nest in this box that every time somebody moves it, and bluebirds, of course, this is a bluebird house. Anybody moves into the neighborhood, I just go, yeah, oh, welcome to the neighborhood. And I bring them cookies. You know that, I've told you. And I, I open it up, put them inside in a bag, and they just think that's really great. And they think that I'm giving them a gift, but they're giving me a gift because I get more birds in the neighborhood that way. Always thinking, right? Always thinking. This is one kind of house that we have here. And I like to take this basket, <laughs> flea market, 25 cents. And my friend Sherry bought this for me for Christmas. My friends know me really well. She got me bird nest making fluff. You can actually buy it online. It's supposed to be for any birds. It comes in a little cage, and um, the birds would just pull, you hang up the cage, and the birds just pull it out, and they make a nest with it. You can put anything in the bottom of this. One time I put a piece of burlap and a little bit of that grassy palm stuff, I don't even know what you call it, from a palm tree that you can plant hanging baskets with, just as long as it's a little fluffy on the bottom. And they add something to it, and boom, especially house finches love this. And you could just put a hook up, there underneath the house and then hang it up and they'll go in there morning doves will go in there make sure that you don't have it on the north side of the house because that's a little cold and the wind gets a little cold put it on a sunny side with a morning sun or this let's see in my house that's east and that's south and that's west so anything facing those ways are fine just not north but a 25 cent basket from a garage sale or the flea market I got it somewhere like that and then when my summer hats that I wear in the garden get all beat up and old like this one, I just take them and I put them like that. <laughs> and you can staple them up anywhere you want. I'm going to put one over here. Maybe we'll get something. Who knows? Here's my brand new lime bush. It's looking a little sad, but you never know. I'm going to put it right up there. Bam. And they'll go in there. And they'll make a nest a lot of times. So we'll see what we get. And it looks kind of cute. What my other friend does is she takes her old cowgirl boots. She, she's a real cowgirl. And she cuts a hole in the side of it. And then she staple guns the top to the fence so it closes the shoe. And the birds can go in and out of the cowboy boot. And she puts them all over her ranch <laughs> on the post and gets bluebirds in them. So you don't even have to spend money. I mean, you can just do it for free. Now, I was pretty excited. I came out here the other day, and my lemon bush needed a haircut, as I do. 
boy, I miss my hairdresser. Don't you, Mom and Dad? And I was going to do a little pruning, and the bush went, Pfft. I went, oh, there's a brown towhee in there. If you want to look it up, look it up in one of your books or online. And I don't want to bother if she's up there building, but she just about has her nest done. And all it is is like a grass cup. There are no twigs or anything. She just finds an already twiggy tree. I've never had one in there before. And Monica, you have one in your lemon bush too, yep. right? Mm -hmm. That's so cool. And then children, you know the dark-eyed juncos at school. They were the ones that nested in the play yard. You know, we were always trying to protect that bush. There are dark-eyed juncos in here. This is that rosemary bush that the bees like so much. Do you notice that there aren't a lot of bees here right now? They have three times of the day. They go out, get all their pollen and stuff in their, in their nectar, go back to the hive, put it all in the cells, clean up, then they go out again, then they come in and do it again, and once more before it gets in to be the evening and cool, they go out one more time. It's three shifts, even if they're close by, just three shifts a day. So timing is everything if you want to see this thing just covered with bees, or you want to see my bush behind my pond just covered with bees. But I sure am glad I planted this. And remember, it was just a little seed special that was grown over there. And I went, hey, that's rosemary. I recognize the leaf. And I stuck it in here, and that was four years ago. So it's given me so much joy, and it has really good cover for the lizards. Because I've noticed that all of them have broken tails. You know why? The blue jays are after their tails. They know they probably can't get the whole lizard, so they just grab the tail. There's meat on that, and they eat that. The crows are doing the same thing. Any birds who like meat are grabbing those poor little lizards. But remember, they can grow another tail back. It just isn't hard, like your bones you're born with. It comes out cartilaginous, rubbery, like your ears and your nose. It's a rubbery bone. So that thing's paid off handsomely, especially since it was free. Well, I hope you've enjoyed Mrs. Terry's backyard. It's the only time I get to see anybody, so it's really nice to have Monica here. Monica, will you say goodbye to them too? Goodbye, guys, and don't forget social distancing. <laughs> We're six feet apart. <laughs> We're six feet apart, that's for sure. We have wipes and alcohol and hand sanitizer. I think the kindergartners call it hand satanizer. <laughs> you know, that goes along with Montane Quay Benarium. <laughs> So look how everything's blooming so much more than the last time you saw. And here's Spirit, Spirit, Spirit. That's one of the cavity nesters. That's the titmouse. Its babies are just about ready to fledge. That means leave the nest. It's spelled F-L-E-D-G-E. Fledge. Rhymes with ledge. Bye, guys.